Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the session. I'm delighted to welcome you all um, to the session covering the MA in Environmental Studies. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Professor Verit Blass, who's the head of the program, um, also an alum from the program, uh, Fagel Train. Hi, guys. Um, I'm going to start. I'm David. I'm from the international school here on campus. So we're very much the hub for all of our international students and international programs on campus. So I'm going to begin by taking just about five or six minutes of your time just to give you an overview of Tel Aviv University, a bit about the international school um, and also about student life, housing, etc. Um, a couple of things. Um, we are recording this session. Uh, we normally record all of our webinar sessions, we then add it to YouTube and then send it out to everyone who registered, um, not everyone's turned up. But we'll do a Q&A session at the end and we can switch off the recording before then, so you're then welcome to switch on your cameras and ask questions openly and freely um, without worrying about it being recorded. Okay, so let's begin. I'm going to begin by playing your video um, that I think just sums up the, the learning experience here at Tel Aviv University that we call Taoism. Tel Aviv University International, the only place in the world where you can study Taoism. What is Taoism? Well, it's a local philosophy that says the best way to study is through experience. Understand with your head, learn with your feet. The best way to study a multicultural society is to live in one. Be ready with your elevator pitch. You never know who you'll meet on campus. If you want to learn the best marketing strategies, just go to the local market. Reading about the Startup Nation? Write your own chapter. Study literature in the place that inspired the bestseller of all time. You can't resolve a conflict until you witness one. At TAU, there is always room for more questions and 400 labs to find the answers. Come experience the wisdom of Taoism at Tel Aviv University International, where first-class education meets a second to none lifestyle. Um, so welcome to the session, everyone. Um, so that's our philosophy. We call that Taoism. Um, and it's just our philosophy here that you, you know, you study best through experience. You learn with your head, you understand with your feet. And learning happens everywhere and sometimes when you least expect it. So when you come to us, you don't just learn in a classroom. You learn in a campus in a city, in a country, all of these things will transform you. Um, and we call that Taoism. We filmed that on campus just two summers ago. A lot of the, the people in the background were international students that, that we got to film. So this gives a good snapshot of Tel Aviv University. Listen, we're Israel's largest and most comprehensive institution of higher education. We have 30,000 total students and of that 2,000 are international students, and they come from 100 plus countries from all over the world. You heard in the video that we have 400 labs, 125 schools and departments, nine faculties. You know, we're truly, we are truly a multidisciplinary institution of academic excellence. We have one campus, Israel's biggest campus, 220 acres, just north of downtown Tel Aviv with lots of green spaces on campus also voted Israel's most beautiful campus as well. We were also just voted the, again, the number one institution um, in Israel by QS just last month. 
So I'm not going to go into all of them, but obviously we're very proud of our ranking as Israel's largest and most comprehensive institution of higher education. We are the number one choice for Israeli students. Um, every ranking you can look at, we're up there among the top 10 or top 20. Um, a lot of these rankings, we're the only non-US institution to make these top 10 lists. So we are up there ranked amongst other Ivy League institutions. Um, and also 55% of the population on campus is women. Um, in 2021, the university set up its very first Equality and Diversity Commission, headed up by Professor Netta Zeev, uh, and her remit is clear, is to increase equality and diversity among everyone on campus. Um, as I mentioned, we're a multidisciplinary institution of academic excellence and our impact is felt large and wide. We have nine faculties and a vast range of research and teaching fields that creates unique and fascinating connections between disciplines that are not traditionally connected to each other. And that alone provides infinite possibilities for academic creativity. We have world-class faculty, renowned professors, 130 research institutions, 400 labs. As I said, we have students from 100 plus countries. Um, every year our students perform over 300,000 hours of community service. And of course, we're based here in the wonderful Mediterranean city of Tel Aviv that we call home. Um, if you haven't been to Tel Aviv, it's a pulsating, vibrant city. It's Israel's cultural and commercial capital. We've been called the Mediterranean capital of cool by the New York Times. We're a non-stop city with amazing nightlife, cuisine and cultures. It's a city you can never stop exploring. The tagline of the city is non-stop. And our tagline here at the International School is um, non-stop discovery. So if there's one thing I want you to take away from the session today, in addition to the wonderful program that you're going to hear more about, um, it's the student life team. We call them uh, madrachim, which is the Hebrew word madrich, madricha, for guide or counsellor. And they're there very much to give you a nice soft landing. So when you come to us, you're not coming to a foreign country. They are all Israeli students. They're all studying with us, doing their first or second degree. Um, and they're there to give you a nice soft landing. So they're there on arrival day. They organize orientation. They live in the dorms with you. They're available 24 seven for any issues or support you need, um, not just academic. You've lost your bank card or your RAFCAV and you need someone who speaks Hebrew to call the authorities. The student life team can, um, can step in. Um, they also uh, take you off on day trips and overnight trips as well. They do events on campus, you know, pizza night, yoga night, movie night, with all of the other international students. You'll get to mix and meet other all the other 2,000 international students, as well as day trips in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, and also overnight trips in the north and in the south. And this actual picture was from one of their trips in Yafo um, just a year and a half ago. Um, so you very much come and you join our family here. And I think this sense of community extends through into the housing as well. So of course we have on-campus housing, there's 24 hour security, there's insurance included, there's a doctor's office there. There's some pictures here you can see. You can either live on your own in a studio style apartment, or you can share a bedroom in one of the other dorms. They all have their own kitchens, laundry facilities, study rooms and um, social rooms also a small gym as well, literally just on campus as well. Um, I do want to just before I finish, just mention about funding. I'll put this in the chat for everyone to access afterwards. And also I'll include it in the email, but on our website, which is listed here, this is where we list all of the scholarship and funding options that, that we offer at the university. And we also have pages there of other external organizations that offer scholarships to students to come and study to study in, in Israel. So I do recommend you to, to look into that. Um, and that's me. Thank you very much. It's a very, very quick overview um, of the university and the Lowy International School. Um, I will send this out, this presentation out by email to everyone as well afterwards with all of those various links. Um, but I'm de delighted to hand over to Professor Verid Blass, who I think is going to give us all a, um, our mini lecture.
Thank you. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Hi, good morning, afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Vered Blas and I'm a, a faculty member at uh, our department of the environmental studies. We'll actually start with a short uh, presentation and then like short mini lecture just to give you a taste for some of the things that we do uh, in my lab and in our uh, school and collaborations. And then we will uh, switch back to ac the actual details about the program. Can everyone hear me well? Yes. Okay, perfect. So let me just do that. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, so let me talk a bit about uh, circular economy. Did any of you heard that uh, that uh, name recently, or term more correctly? Beside you. <laughs> No, okay, that's interesting. Okay, so uh, uh, I come from the field of uh, research that is called industrial ecology. And in industrial ecology, we look at um, industrial system, consumption and production. Okay, so basically all of us, either on the consumer side or the producer side, and how it relates to the environment, to social aspect, to economic aspects. And one of the concepts in, uh, in that area is the concept of circular systems. It means that we want to create and close the loop, be able to look at everything we do, um, uh, in a way that is completely circular, so minimum waste, right? So think about the most uh, efficient natural systems that you have. No, no, nothing is wasted. Waste of one animal is the feed for another animal. Uh, the food chain, you know. So we're trying to really mimic nature and bring it to our uh, everyday uh, lifetime. Uh, we like to think about it in uh, in two ways, uh, in two kind of circle, either the natural cir circle or the or the synthetic circle. Okay, so anything that we use that comes from nature, we want to try to bring back to nature, and anything that we actually produce, uh, which it might be synthetic or use other materials, we don't want them to be lost, and we want to use them as many uh, as long as possible, as many times as possible in every. Um, in everything we do, okay, either on the production side or the consumption side. So this notion of uh, of um, circular economy basically suggests that we want to stop. Uh, we stop one. We, we want to stop this linear system of making stuff, designing stuff, making stuff, using it, throwing it away. Okay, so this is like the the linear uh, uh, figure that you see here. But instead of one of that, we want to try to close the loop. Okay, so we want to try to bring back materials, products, parts into the economic system and just be more efficient this way. Okay, now of course it's not easy, and there's a lot of research going on these days in, in the world and also in Israel about circular economy and how to reach there. What we try to do and I focus on is where do we need innovation? Okay, so you know, if you think again about the startup nation and a lot of new creative ideas comes from him, we want to start thinking where can we support innovation in this um, uh, trip or road to circularity. So um, for example, we want to be able to collect some of the products that we use, okay, and we want to be able to either reuse it as a product, if not as part, and if no other option, at least to recycle and reuse what we call reuse the materials, uh, as known as recycling, instead of just sending it to landfill. But we also want to have innovation in other places. We want to, innovation to start already when we design the product, right? So maybe with new materials, for example, or we want to try to be as efficient as possible and close the loop while we produce the products, right? So concept like industrial symbiosis and just operational efficiency that companies like a lot because it means that they save it, save them resources, but also save them, uh, of course, money. Okay, we can also think about it in reusable packaging instead of uh, disposable packaging, right? So what if I have this uh, uh, special plastic box for agriculture produce that can travel all around the world, uh, always full with something going somewhere instead of wasting all of those um, Cardboard uh, boxes. Yeah, apparently, we already uh, changed it to. 
uh, and finally, we are also, you know, when we think about us as consumers, maybe there are new ways to do business for us, right? So do I really need to buy a car or a washing machine or can I just, you know, get it as a service and then it stays, uh, I'm not the owner and it stays the company uh, ownership and then they can really do more efficient things with that at the end of the day. Uh, so this is everything related to innovation, okay? Uh, we cannot really uh, do anything without thinking about innovation. Excuse me one second. Uh, excuse me one sec. Sorry for that, I had a disconnect. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, so all of that innovation is required, but of course it requires a lot of disciplines to do such uh, work. And of course it's easy to think about in theory, but how do we actually advance such thinking in practice? And this is a lot of what we do uh, in my lab and in our school is thinking about innovating a solution. It could be at the technological aspect, it could be in behavioral aspect, it could be, of course, in economic and managerial aspects. So why Israel is interesting in that case, okay, we are very poor in our own natural resources. We have a bit of aggregate, cement, but everything else we bring from abroad, okay. We have no open borders at the moment for energy or materials management, so we are kind of like an island set up. We have uh, we are located in a very high risk climate change uh, impact. So actually recent reports suggest that we are eight time, times more in risk compared to other areas in the world. We contribute very little, but we're gonna suffer from it a lot. We are very still young to this concept of industrial ecology, circularity, only in the last, I would say 13 years that those topics got into the discussion and into policymaking. And finally, innovation is in our DNA, right? And we still need to create the ecosystem in order to become innovative and, and leaders in that area of uh, sustainability. So Israel is a very interesting case study. It attract a lot of attention worldwide. And now I will just give you a few examples of the type of innovation that we do around that uh, in my lab and in collaboration with other uh, professors in uh, at the university. So this is the first example of trying to extract nanocellulose from what we call end-of-life textiles. So textiles are collected in bins and we want to do something with them instead of just landfilling, landfilling them. So we came up with this new process in the lab that uh, using a very strong acid, we are able to separate the nano cellulose, which is used in industry in all kinds of application, and at least to recycle uh, that uh, material. But it means that we need to have a system in place. Okay, so this work is in collaboration with Professor Hadas Naman from engineering, and we have a lot of cross across uh, uh, departments that collaboration like that. And we have two students working on it. One is working in the lab on the process itself, and one is evaluating the efficiency of such processes, thinking circularity and environmental aspect uh, in mind. And and there is a collection system, but of course, it's not always enough. In Israel, there is no uh, legislation at the moment that requires us to collect the textiles. It will come in 2025. Also in Europe, it's now moving this way. Uh, we are not sure, you know, you need to be able to separate. Maybe some things are good to be worn again. Some of them are already tiered and you can only go to recycling. Of course, we can only use the natural fibers to so think about cotton, uh, but what about all the synthetics and all the uh, microplastics, etc. So there's a lot of uh, things to think about when we collect and separate. Also, so in our uh, new processes, there are a lot of weights. So we need to think about recycling and circularity within our new process, not only that it helps to close the cycle and save some uh, materials, but also our in our little process in the lab and later on in a scale up, we are also taking care of additional fibers, solids that are left over, water, uh, and of course the acid itself that we use it and could be actually recycled and be used, uh, used again. So integrating the circularity is like in a double meaning, meaning is first to solve problems that are related to waste management, but also within the process itself to be as circular as uh, possible. And we uh, match that with environmental assessment using life cycle thinking to show that really our process hopefully more environmental than other textile recycling options that are out there at the moment. Another example is using drones images in order to map uh, illegal uh, waste dumps that sits all over Israel with a lot of construction waste, wood, plastics, farmers that throw up stuff and uh, try to identify what sits on the ground 
on one end, and then what can we do? Can is it good for recycling? How much it will cost us? So to the left, you see a drone picture from different uh, types of waste that we uh, allocated, and on the right side, you can see how we actually go and in with all kind of manual and automatic tools, we identify the type of the waste, the amount, the volume, and then convert it into economic and environmental aspects to try to understand what can be done. And uh, then we have economic uh, uh, data on the top of that. We just completed a pilot research that suggested that on the ground at the moment, 200 million shekels are sitting uh, on the ground waiting for materials to be collected and, and, re, and reused, okay? So this will be work in collaboration with students from the TAD Center, which is AI and Big Data Center that we have in Tel Aviv University. We are now working on automating the processes. So at the beginning, we did it manually. So kind of going and identifying the waste in a manual way. And now students are working on how to do it automatically with image recognition, with semantic segmentation, using different AI tools. You can see here that the photo might be with many different types of waste together. And we need to be able to separate it and quantify how much from each material is available in order to understand the economic and environmental uh, potential for that. We also work closely with uh, startups. So this is an example for a startup that a group of uh, students last year worked with in our project-based learning uh, uh, course. Solotum is, uh, is a new company, a startup company that came up with a solution to dissolve plastic uh, bags in water and have the water stay clean and be able to use them afterwards. Uh, it's a very unique formula, but on the other end, no one tested the real environmental aspect for that. So we are uh, we worked with them last year to conduct a, a preliminary life cycle assessment for their technology. The company learned a lot. We learned a lot. The students got the hands on experience working with a startup, understanding all of their considerations, but also to be able to use a full hands on tool uh, like life cycle uh, assessment that they might learn in theory before, but did not have the, the option to really practice it. We also have a lot of uh, research with uh, industry in other areas. This is an example for a company, sorry, it's in Hebrew, but uh, it's, uh, it's a new uh, e-waste recycling infrastructure that exists in Israel now for electric um, uh, motors and uh, batteries. And uh, this is also with uh, people in special needs that, that work there. And we do all kinds of research related to electronic waste recycling collection, recycling technologies, and we work closely with that company that opened that uh, facility. They provide us access to data, and uh, we complement it with a variety of, uh, of tools that we use in order to quantify. I also want to take a moment to talk about COVID because COVID uh, brought a lot of behavioral changes. So if you think about uh, the COVID, although it seems long time ago, we actually still see the impact. So, you know, COVID created a sudden and rapid change in the behavior and the consumption patterns. We shop way more online. Uh, we have actually way more consumables and many places did not go backwards to reusable. Uh, it's not clear if we do more or less reuse. On one end, you don't want to maybe use something that someone else used on the other end, some people lost economically status and, and could not afford many things. And then the reuse or the sharing was actually an opportunity for them to save some money. And of course, uh, especially in the lock, lock times, there was a lot of time to do cleanups in the home. So a lot of new ways that got you know, uh, waited in people's drawers and, and closets for a long time, uh, was up in the streets and, and the municipalities were not ready to handle that amount of waste. Uh, we also uh, see that the I think very it's just a uh, connection issue. There are differences in the type of waste and where it's accumulating waste uh, went up, of course, with all of the online shopping. E-waste doubled because we cleaned a lot of our uh, draw, you know, drawers. On the other end, in Tel Aviv, the waste generation dropped in 25%. And that's mainly because in Tel Aviv, we have a lot of people only commuting to work. So if the city was shut, a lot of the people that only commute to work did not show up. And therefore, the overall total waste, uh, waste um, um, uh, quantity uh, was uh, was uh, decreasing. Of course, those people stay in their houses. So in the other cities, there was an increase in waste. So of course, it's uh, materials are balanced and they don't go anywhere. But the distribution of the waste or the type of the waste uh, might change. 
So where do we need, uh, in summary, where do we need more innovation when it comes to circular uh, systems? We need, in Israel, being such a small country with very limited uh, scale, you know, uh, opportunities for scale, we really try to come up with small scale recycling technologies because a lot of the recycling technologies at the moment are requiring uh, large infrastructure and very big quantities. And as I said, when we are an island, it's hard uh, to operate operate them in order to be economic. Uh, we do require a lot of IT tools in order to support the transition to circularity and Israel is strong in that. So we have many actually startup uh, companies that comes from the software uh, development uh, agendas and, and are able to get into those technologies. Uh, we do need better indicators. Everyone talks about circular economy, but actually the progress is very slow at the moment. So we need to be able to, to, indicate, to, to measure ourselves and, and, and come up with solid quantitative indicators. Consumers are a big part of the deal, right? I cannot change business model. I cannot uh, sort uh, waste and, and create more system participation if consumers are out of the game. So we still need to learn more about our consumers and how to engage them and to segment them and understand better uh, decision making. And of course, for that, we also need a lot of data. That's where many times our research comes in and also more and more companies understand that there is no one solution that fits all and they really need to be able to differentiate between markets markets, between products, between people, in order to make it really happen. So if you have any question, I would love to answer that before we move to the uh, program presentation. Any questions? Yes, please, Jesse. Um, thank you very much for, for this, Professor Verit Blood. That, that was a good mini lecturer, just getting to know about the concept of circular economy. It is new to me, yes, and uh, I have to say that uh, I'll have to look uh, into it more. But uh, I was just wondering, are there any guiding, guiding principles or strategies for, for, for the circular economy model? You mean in Israel on a policy level? Yeah, in Israel and also uh, also it as a concept as a as a as a, as a program uh, that. Uh... So so we don't have a full program just on circularity. This is just a small taste to part of the research that we do in my lab and also other labs in Israel. We do have a waste management system for tw like strategy for twenty thirty circular economy for twenty fifty as part of the Israeli uh, you know government being part of the OECD and being required to come up with those plans. Part of what you can find in our program is the connection to reality and to the practice, and this we will always make you you know this connection right so to policy. Uh, if it's through, uh, you know, going to see facilities that have special landfill options or recycling facilities or, or a new engagement options. And, uh, and we also have more and more faculty members that deals with circular economy. So, for example, Adas Maman, if in the past she only did pure water technologies, now she also shifted to do more of the waste management progress. So we have it in all levels, you know, in Tel Aviv, in, within the university, within the city, and of course on the, on the Israel country level, you know, but there is no one specific program geared towards that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, bear with me one moment. I switch presentations, one sec. Um. Can you see the new presentation? Yes. Okay. Okay, let me show you. We'll start with a very short uh, film on our program. Hopefully it will work. One sec. Um, I think I will need to share it again anyhow. So one second. Okay. 
Okay, let's see if you... At Tel Aviv University, we investigate the causes and consequences of climate change and we look for innovative solutions together with government bodies, public companies, startups and more. To save the depleting resources of our Earth, we develop new sources of energy, protein and materials like plastic. All these from seaweed. Did you know that seaweed and algae do not require any agricultural land or fresh water to survive? Production and consumption systems are complex. They are very important for our economy, but at the same time, they have huge environmental impacts. In industrial ecology, we try to understand their relationships with Mother Earth in an holistic way. In this program, I teach a course about industrial ecology tools and methods in business context. Can plants become an environmental issue or rather the solution? We study both invasive plants that have negative impact on the environment, but also plants that can clean up polluted soils and therefore be beneficial to the environment. In our lab, we develop materials and processes to reduce contaminants from the environment. One of the most fascinating research topics being investigated in our lab is environmental applications and implications of nanomaterials, which also includes nanoplastic. Here, we research the timeliest issues, how climate change affects the transmission of infectious diseases. For example, how climate change can affect transmission of West Nile virus spread by mosquitoes. Why are we facing a global ecological crisis? What if each of us would think on the repercussions of our lifestyle and the values underlying public policies? The food we choose to eat and how it is produced has implications for the future of humanity. This choice affects the sustainability of our planet, the fabric of our society, and our health. This is the International Master Program in Environmental Studies at Tel Aviv University. Here, you will learn from these experts on a wide range of environmental topics, unique and thought-provoking. You will experience the most innovative studies in this field in one accelerated year. Let's lead the change in environment and sustainability and ensure a better life for us and the future generations. Okay, so can you see now the presentation again? Yes. Great. Okay, so this was a very short introductory video to our program. People shifted around. Uh, so uh, Alex is now uh, the head of the department and I am adding the, the program, the international program itself. But you were able to kind of get a glance and, and a feel to the different uh, faculty members that we have and the topic that we uh, research. Regarding the international, specific international program, this is an accelerated one year uh, program in English. Okay, it will give you an MA in environmental sciences. It's a three semesters um, program, so very condensed. Uh, you are, uh, um, you know, required to kind of participate in all of the courses and be there. So, uh, so the idea is that you really kind of free a year to really do it uh, seriously. We take a very multidisciplinary approach. You get different uh, views and different uh, uh, aspects of variety of environmental challenges globally, but very specifically also to Israel and the Mediterranean region. Um, the teachers are both the faculty of the department, but also a special external uh, professional uh, lecturers that come from a variety of topics. And that at the end of the day, and, and this is also related to what David chose in the beginning, this ends on experience is really important for us because we really believe that that's the way to go uh, and learn something and be ready for the professional uh, world. We have people coming from different countries. It's a mix of international and Israeli students that choose to learn in that program. Uh, and it's diverse backgrounds from the social sciences, from engineering, from medicine, from art, so all over. And usually we have a class of between, I would say, 17 to 30, depends on the on the year and the size of students. This last year, we had the 20 students coming from different, uh, from eight different uh, countries, but it's quite changing uh, every year. Uh, 
basically any BA or BSc that you have in a field, uh, in any field is accepted. You're not required to have uh, just, you know, an, an undergrad in environmental studies. Uh, all of the requirements are here to the left, you know, GPA of at least three out of four or 80 out of 100, depend, you know, what is the scale in your uh, country. Uh, of course, you will need to show uh, a, a ability in English and, uh, and two letters of recommendation and a personal essay, but this is all quite standard. You also have the the cost and funding numbers here uh, and uh, Lee can give you more information about later on for uh, people that come from abroad there is also an opportunity for scholarship and other external funding funding and Tau International also working and helping uh, with that. Let's talk a bit about what you know what you actually get in the program so kind of the curriculum so there are some uh, introductory courses for those that come without background there are core class courses seminars and elective courses so the core are in variety of topics like environmental policy ecology urban sustainability food systems uh, everyone takes them uh, then you have the elective courses that allow you to explore specifically the topics that you are more interested at and this is just an uh, uh, just a few examples here of marine systems, environmental or water policy. Every year it changes. So not every year we offer all the elective courses. Uh, in the last few years, we are also offering a new seminar uh, in collaboration with Engineers Without Border Israel, which is a nonprofit organization that do a lot of sustainable development work. And uh, last year we launched first, uh, first time a year long seminar, uh, the students uh, took and some of the students actually went at the end uh, uh, for implementation uh, in Kenya. Uh, advertising, earth, uh, planning and creating environmental campaigns. This is the new course that is gonna be offered next year as a project-based learning. So every year it's different. Uh, this year it was on industry and the environment. Uh, and next year it's about more about how to, to create um, effective campaigns, working with different NGOs on, on major environmental aspects. You also have a field trip course which gives you the ends on and the ability to really witness uh, the field and how things are done. And overall, it's a 38 uh, credit points that you take in courses. Plus, you have uh, a complementary course in statistics if you didn't take such in your undergrad and the final project. You also, as, as part of the end on experiment, experience, beside the final project, we also offer the internship program, which is a four-month internship position in one of the Israeli leading organizations. In the past, it was mainly NGOs. Now it's also municipalities and even some businesses in a variety of different topics. Also, the Israeli students that join our program uh, participate in that. And basically, it means that you can get a small stipend for being an intern in one of those organizations and help them to promote a specific specific uh, pre you know, preset topic that uh, that the internship is for. In the beginning of the year, you, we kind of have this uh, mix and match uh, day when you can learn about all the different options and, and get a quick interviews and connect with those that are interesting for you. And then you further pursue it. And uh, many students participate in that program and it's considered very successful. You also have the ability to switch and decide that you want uh, to, to extend your uh, non-thesis um, degree to a thesis track. And then uh, this is, of course, only open for excellent students uh, with, you know, certain uh, requirements. And it means another year of studies. So another three semester when you complete your master thesis with uh, advisors from the faculty or from other faculties uh, in Tel Aviv University. And uh, every year we have few that decide, you know, that they got so excited, they, they figure out they did not learn enough or did not want, you know, did want to dive deep into one specific topic that didn't have the chance before and they decide to to stay and apply for that if you are wondering you know about career opportunities and what can be done once you graduate so we have a lot of ex examples so this is examples of uh, what type of jobs people got uh, after graduating. So it could be, you know, in the government, it could be in, uh, environmental engineers, depends on your background, of course, project officers, uh, sustainability managers in companies, uh, sustainability coordinators in municipalities. So quite a uh, 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 quite, um, big range of activities. And we actually have here, uh, uh, Fager, which uh, very kindly uh, uh, agreed to participate and to share some of her experience in a minute about uh, the program. Fager, um, do you want to talk first and then we'll take some questions? Yeah, 
I think that's uh, that's how we had planned to do it. So happy to do so. Right. Okay. So everyone can hear me. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Fagel Train, and uh, I graduated from the program uh, a year and a bit ago. I was born in Canada, but I moved to Israel 12 years ago. Uh, so I had been in Israel for quite a while, but I still loved working and communicating in English. Um, I found it easier sometimes, and I found that this program was a really great way for me to get the best of both worlds. And a little bit about how I ended up in the program. I had been a high school English art and history teacher for about 10 years. Uh, so my background was very different than environmental studies. But within that field, I was always extremely interested in environment, nature, animal protection, and welfare. And after years of subtly bringing sustainable development into my classes, um, I realized I had to make a little change. I also did move to Nepal for a year. I joined an Israeli NGO where I was working with women's health and human rights in a water scarcity zone. So there I saw the impacts of climate change first. And um, I saw how dramatically that could impact people's lives. And here in Israel, we are heating up um, and I realized that this project, uh, this problem is going to impact us um, very quickly and in a very real way. So I wanted to go back to school and find a way to really bring sustainability into my own career choices. Uh, so I chose Tel Aviv University uh, after looking at all the different programs here in Israel. They were definitely the most diverse. Um, and without going into the other ones, I realized that Tel Aviv would give me that combination of what I was really looking for. Uh, and the diversity of the students, you know, uh, Verit was giving us a little background about all the different countries the students came from. In my program, we had about 30 people from literally all over the world, a ton of different languages, and everybody bringing their own unique experiences. And that made it so, so enriching and valuable. Uh, you know, we still have WhatsApp groups with all of the friends, all of the classmates, and every once in a while, people will still see uh, news articles about an issue, for example, uh, invasive hippos in Colombia, which was somebody's presentation in the class. And every time we see it, we send it to each other and say, oh, look, it's her presentation. Um, the diversity of the classes made a big difference. And it was one of the reasons I wanted to go to Tel Aviv. I was able to study everything from plant biodiversity to environmental economics. Uh, you know, there were classes that weren't necessarily originally what I wanted to study. They were part of the core curriculum. And I realized, wow, this is absolutely fascinating. There were also a lot of choices, um, especially in the second semester in my year. You know, it was hard to pick what you wanted to study because you have to think about what is it that I want to go on and do with this degree. Um, but I have to say that that diversity was also one of the biggest challenges because sitting in class, an art teacher beside somebody who studied chemical engineering, it's almost too wild. What what kind of difference is that? Uh, but ultimately, it's one of the program's biggest strengths because everything that we bring just gives all of us students and the professors more of an opportunity to really dive into these environmental topics and to understand it from a diverse background. You know, me coming from an education background, me being able to look at the social, socio, um, you know, religious or cultural aspects versus somebody who brings that really hardcore chemistry side, we really got to work together and understand. Um, I have to recommend to anybody who's serious about joining to get to know your professors. Um, since graduating, I've been in touch with a couple of the professors who've continued to help me. For example, um, I took a few courses with a professor named Boaz who works with uh, animals and biology, and he's been helping me learn how to better clean some of our animal bone taxidermy collections, um, which is a very niche thing, I know. Uh, but having that person now is just wonderful for my own career advancement. Um, I know Verit was talking before about the final project. Uh, that was also a really wonderful opportunity to get to know environmental issues here in Israel. It's a lot of the students use it as an opportunity to meet people in the field, to pick topics that were really near and dear to them. And, you know, it's just, it really pushed a lot of us into finding our careers. You know, we really used it as an opportunity. Um, and I have to say, for those of you coming to Tel Aviv, 
joined the extracurriculars at Tel Aviv University. I was part of a club. Um, it was uh, Arabic Hebrew theater and dialogue. So students from different backgrounds telling their stories and creating theater about conflict and peace. And yes, it's for people that speak more Hebrew or Arabic, um, but it was a really wonderful way for me to experience the culture of Tel Aviv. Um, and using all that experience, I'll give you a quick summary of what I do with it now. Um, the job hunt is hard. Um, I know we're all facing that in our home countries. I had no idea in some ways what I was going to do with the background in education and this new degree in environmental studies with an interest in animals and poking bugs. Um, and then it fell into my lap. I am now um, the operations or field manager of Gazelle Valley in Jerusalem. We are Israel's biggest urban nature community park. Um, we have a herd of over 115 endangered gazelles. We have over 240 species of birds. We have two natural rivers and a sort of natural lake. Um, we have a ton of environmental education activities where currently building a new field school on our location with a science lab and, and discovery center under the lake. So people will be able to see not an aquarium, but natural water. And, you know, professors, including my old environmental law professor at Tel Aviv, uh, Tamara Lautner Lev, recently included us in a really groundbreaking study on um, nature spaces in Israel that are working on climate change adaptation and mitigation. And she wrote about our water resources and how our uh, lakes are basically water regulation systems. We have rewilding projects. We have wildlife captures and releases rehabilitation of wild animals that have been raised inappropriately, especially tortoises. We This morning I was uh, chasing a mallard duck because somebody who uh, illegally raised a duck at home released it one night into our valley and it's not a wild animal and we are trying to release it into a petting zoo. Uh, so every day here is a day in which I get to engage in community education, actual hands-on touching, healing animals, working with teams of veterinarians, working with climate change, adaptation and mitigation, chasing animals like ducks. Um, you know, I really came into Tel Aviv University wanting to find that place to make a difference and find that way to engage more proactively with climate change and sustainability in Israel. And I am very, very lucky. And I did work for it, but I am lucky to have found one of the few places where I feel like I get to make that difference using what I learned at Tel Aviv, calling my professors when I need that help, um, getting to see my professors on Zooms, because sometimes we're all engaged in the same government regulatory uh, meetings. Um, and I feel very, very blessed to, to get that opportunity. And um, obviously, if anyone has questions for me after, you're welcome to ask. Um, but I do have to say, if you come to Tel Aviv next year uh, or this coming year, then uh, come and visit me at Gazelle Valley and uh, I'll give you the little tour. Wonderful. That's just uh, yeah. wonderful. I think as much as I love meeting prospective students and chatting about the university, you know, for them to hear it from actual students and from alum is just so much more, more powerful. It's they, they want to listen and, and chat to you, not necessarily to chat to me, unfortunately. But it's wonderful to, to have you here, Figley, and, and to share your experiences of the program and what you're doing now. It's just it's super, super important. So thank you so much. I'm going to switch off the recording now. So anybody feel free to to ask any questions. Myself, uh, Professor Blass or, or Figley is here uh, for the next 10 minutes. Let me just switch off the recording.